Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about why governments want PhDs. And essentially you will see that there are various governments around the world, particularly the enlightened governments which want growth in terms of science and technology in their country. They essentially value PhDs, they love PhDs, they want to have more PhDs. But in many meetings which are held by the different national organizations for science and technology and scholarship, what we find is that it's actually hard to get PhDs in large numbers. And this is something most countries would like to do. So if you look at the different measures which are used to quantify the technological prowess of a country or the scholarly prowess of the country, one of the things is the number of publications which are being developed by that country. The other is number of patents which are being generated by the country. And the third is often the number of PhDs which are being produced by the country. Because this number as far as PhDs are concerned is going to have a big impact in the science and technology and scholarship infrastructure of the country down the road. So now let's look at why governments value PhD and what can be done about it. So the number one issue is that PhDs represent the epitome in terms of education and research. So while the bachelor's degree essentially teaches you different things, it teaches you all the coursework which are required in a certain discipline, the master's degree further cements this coursework. You essentially go deeper into one of the fields, you get some exposure to research in the case you are doing a non-thesis master's degree. All these degrees essentially go with learning the current knowledge in any system. And so you will find that in most countries, it's not very difficult to give a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. You can in fact set up a university, you can train some people to give these degrees. Basically, they can go through any book and they can teach that book. So if you are giving a degree in computer science, there are books out there in data structures, algorithms, compilers, machine learning, and any person with a bachelor's degree or master's degree can go through these books and teach a course at short notice. Now the same thing can be done in all kinds of disciplines such as physics, economics, philosophy, political science, or whatever else you are dealing with. But now when you are thinking of the PhD degree, this becomes much more difficult than giving the master's and bachelor's degree because essentially the PhD degree requires that you create new knowledge, that you write a thesis on the subject and essentially this thesis has to be reviewed and vetted by a committee of professors and also sometimes by external examiners. So if you want the PhD to be a valued degree it's going to be a degree which is going to be vetted by people who are experts in that narrow technical field and therefore giving the PhD degree is very difficult, it's very cumbersome and it involves a lot of work not only on the part of the student but also on the part of the advisor. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. Now the second thing is that PhD research is a subject which is very hard to teach. And like I mentioned before, while it's easy to teach the course content of any subject, it's very hard to teach research. Now, many people have tried to quantify how research is done and there are different approaches to research such as qualitative research, quantitative research, hybrid methods and so on. However, despite all these methods being known, whenever you pick up a research problem, you have to essentially implement these methods and this is more of an art than a science. And one of the ways the PhD advisor teaches you how to do research is essentially by laying out various things when you have discussions with him. And in some way, you essentially follow the path which he has taken. So essentially what happens is that each PhD student learns how to do research from his PhD supervisor. And then he or she tries to pass this on to his student. So in many ways, students are like the professional children of PhD. So that's something to keep in mind. The PhD is a professional child of a PhD. So again, that is the one of the problems is that research is a hard subject to 
teach to people and that is why you find that any state or country which is a developing country which has fallen behind has a lot of difficulty in actually catching up because these people need to figure out how to do research and this takes a lot of time. So in any country you will see there is a huge divergence between the top universities and the bottom universities in that country and also there is a huge divergence between the top universities in the world and the bottom universities around the world. So unfortunately while in the case of bachelor's degree and master's degree different universities are more or less at a similar level the students being more important here than the faculty the PhD degree is different because the PhD degree has to be essentially taught by teaching research to the students and that is an onerous task. Now the number three point is that you can't force people to do PhD. So this is a problem which is always coming in the way of various government organizations and bodies, the education ministries and so on because while we do want to increase the number of PhDs, unfortunately the young people do not want to do PhDs. So we have to make the PhD degree more lucrative or at least give some kind of incentive for people to do PhD and this is a continuous process where people try to figure out as to what needs to be done to motivate people to do the PhD because it's not going to be only money it has to be a combination of the work they like to do the kind of work which is being done at the university so essentially you have to select people who like to do research also during the undergraduate training period especially at the bachelor and master's level you have to hone students who are good in doing research and encourage them to do the PhD either at the same university or at a different university so essentially you cannot force people into a PhD program but you can cajole them you can motivate them by your own example and therefore the students if they look at professors if they find that I really like the kind of life this guy has he essentially does research travels to exotic locations on conferences and so on and has a lot of flexible time then they may think about doing the PhD degree themselves rather than working in a nine to five corporate job. Now the fourth issue is that the PhD involves a lot of sacrifice of money and time during a youth of a person and so essentially when people are in their 20s and sometime in their early 30s they spend all this time in trying to do research and what happens is that they do not make a lot of money during this time. So this is again one of the problems as far as PhD degree is concerned. Now of course the governments are trying to pay a stipend to most PhD students and many fellowships have been created to encourage PhD students to continue with this program but to some extent the stipend itself is often insufficient. It is a question of motivation. So there are many students who are actually motivated to do research because they want to have a career in research and science and in publishing papers and going to conferences and so on. And if this academic career becomes to people, if they find that it is sufficiently interesting and nice in terms of the quality of life which people can enjoy, then again people will do the PhD. So again most governments try to encourage the youth to do the PhD degree. Finally, I should say the investment in PhD is actually much less than the output as far as the government is concerned. So most governments may need to give a small amount of stipend to the people who are doing their PhD and also various government bodies and agencies, they essentially give out a large number of research projects to different professors around the country. And the objective of this research project, of course, is to do research, but a spin or side benefit of this is that a lot of PhD students get trained as part of this research project. So in many countries, such as in US and Europe, most of the money for the PhD students comes from the research project. So again, the government actually spends billions of dollars in research so that PhD students can get employment and research can be done and then these PhD students go over to the private sector to the government or remain in university and then further continue the research. So essentially you can think of these billions of dollars of expense as the way to produce more PhD students because at the end of the day what is produced from this research are papers and PhDs these are the main things. 
sometimes some product is also brought out or transferred to a company but most of the time the actual quantitative thing which is produced out of a research project at a university is the phd student himself or herself so these are some of the things which governments try to do to encourage phds because like i mentioned governments love phds they realize that phds are key for the economic growth of the country and if you see around the world over the last couple of decades many countries have tried to incentivize phd production for example china has greatly increased the number of phds being produced india has also been on that path and now various countries in the middle east such as saudi uae are also setting up research universities to increase the number of phds which are out there because they do know that if you have more phds down the road you are going to have more science and technology and therefore you are going to become a richer country even if you do not have commodities in your country like oil or gold or something like that so this was my take on why governments want phds why governments value phds and i hope it helps you to figure out why the phd degree is very important not just for you as a person or for you as a scholar but also for the economic and scientific ecosystem in general so i'll end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then